Ty, pros and cons about buying on Facebook. I heard a lot of bad reviews. Okay, I like buying gear on Facebook because a lot of times I meet people who don't know what they got, right? I had a lady sell me a, it was a 16 to 24, something like that. And she thought that the autofocus didn't work and she didn't know it was a switch. And she, the, the lens was like a $1,600 lens. She thought she got it wet and it wasn't working and she was trying to sell it for like $400 because she didn't know how to work it. I put it on my camera body and I remember she had like, was, I came up to her work to get it and she had went to the other room and I hit the switch and it was like, zoop, zoop. I was like, this thing worked. Hit the switch back and paid her right there. Here you go. See you later. Always take your camera body so that you can test the glass. Make sure you point the glass into light so that you can see if there's any scratches or nicks or anything on the lenses, especially the internal elements. I see a lot of people who have issues with internal elements. That is a problem. And I'll tell you another trick too. I often look for Sony glass that has dirt inside, right? I'm gonna tell you why, a little trick. So I am a Sony Pro member, which any of you can sign up with as long as you have a Pro body or two. They offer free cleanings. So if I buy glass that has dirt in it or something on the element and, and, and I can talk the person down and say, well, it's got dirt in it. You know, it's gonna be two, 300 to clean it. Not for me, because I'm a Sony Pro. So I may get a glass way below market value because it has dirt in it or it has fog in one of the lenses or a speck on the lenses or something that I know I can get fixed for free. So a lens that's 1600, it's already used for 12. I may be able to walk away with it for 850, $900 on a lens that's easily double the price on one because I know how to, how to clean it, how to get it fixed, things like that. So those are things you may want to think about. I like buying a lot of used lenses. I'm kind of just stuck in a way trying to figure out the pricing but then again i'm thinking somebody that would that would be okay with that pricing would be like a high-end restaurant what i'm thinking honestly is he may not be the best beta yeah right i would at least get somebody else to compare what he's saying now if you hear it from two out of three people then yeah okay that's, that is what it is mm -hmm. but i would comp that, you may just catch one person in one side of town that's in you know that's going through one thing that's why i like to bounce bounce the ideas off multiple betas. That's why I usually tell you get at least three. Get three betas in the course. I'm like, get three betas, take what they what mm -hmm. they say and compare it together. And try to get three different tier. Like get the guy that's not starting but not doing this great and get the guy that's knocking it out the park and then your guy in the middle. You want to know where the ballpark figure is. You, yeah. you could have a guy that's I, just, you know, he just skimming by. He just, you know, he may look like he up there and been busy, but he may not be winning. I've had yeah. that I've had that happen before. Yeah, it's it's tough, man. Just because I feel like that's like the only thing that I'm stuck on right now. Because I guess like the, the the town that I live in, it's not a town where it's like very high end. They don't have like super high end restaurants on like the town that's like 45 minutes away from me. You see what I'm saying? I got an idea for you. Find some Facebook groups with uh, restaurant owners and talk to them about pricing. Because you'd be surprised at some of the pricing, you, you know, some of the prices that may pop up. That you may, you know, he's, his stuff may be lowballing. It may be restaurant owners to say, man, I, I sell grilled cheese sandwiches and we pay this amount for photos. You know what I mean? So get, mm -hmm. more, get more opinions and try to get in the community to learn, you know, more about what they're paying. Because they'll tell you. So should I should I show them my my packages or should I just ask them like, hey, you know, is this price too much? I think you should show him the package. If he a beta client and he not paying, I think you should just show him the package. This is what I'm looking to get. And but as far as like the Facebook groups, you know, because there, there'll be multiple people there and like mm -hmm. not all of them are going to be my beta clients, you know. So initially going into a Facebook group, should I target one person or should I just talk to the group, the whole group itself and kind of be like, hey. These are the packages, you know, is this too much for this or? In two ways. One, I'm asking questions. I'm going to leave it open-ended. Hey, okay. if I want to get a picture of this plate, this many angles, yada, 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 what are, you guys, what are you guys paying for something like that? Then after you got that information, then I will come back with a package and say, does this make sense to you? Even if you position okay. yourself as a, as a restaurant owner, like, you know what I'm saying? Hey, I got a photographer gave me this price. What do you guys think about this? This work is really good. Yeah. You'd be surprised. You may get a few. Oh, that's cheap. Or that's right on. You know what I'm saying? So I, I would present it like that just to get more opinions. His fam says, I'm currently looking at some old lens. And that's the 50. Um, if you want to find some good old glass with character, look at some older 50s. Now, that, that's great for a look. 
You want to add a little something different to your headshots that only you can do? Find you some old glass with some character and you'll have a product that only you can replicate with that lens. Trust me, that's that's a great way to go when you want to offer an executive level headshot or something you want to name. Remember, we talked about having items that that other companies can't compete with because you name them what you name them like a Big Mac. Burger King can't compete with that. All they have is the Whopper. It ain't the Big Mac, though. You can do that if you have glass with character, if that is your style, if that is your niche. So let me guess, your passion is this, and you wanna attract this or this, so you can make more of this, but your portfolio or demo reel is not this. I've worked for these companies in the past. When it comes to finding a job or getting the attention of potential clients, a demo reel or portfolio with random clips and music won't cut it, and that's why I created this. The five key steps for creating an effective demo reel that converts. It's an online course designed to show you how to market your skills and past experience and create a video portfolio that's designed to blow away your competition and 10x your results. Remember, if you can't tell your story, how do you expect someone to hire you to effectively tell their story? Enroll today at Flash Film Academy. It's time to turn passion into profit. Oh, wait, 14 or 16 for real estate depends on your sensor size. If you're if your crop sensor depends on your sensor size, you may want to go as big as you can go, as wide as you can go. So 14, if possible, whatever the biggest, the largest you can go without distortion, without going fish eye is the largest you want to go when it comes to real estate photography. Now, listen, depending on what software you use, if you're a Lightroom guy, depending on what you're using, you can correct a lot of that distortion. There is a lot to help you correct that distortion. But if you're doing architectural photography where they want extremely perfect lines, you want a tilt shift lens. You don't want to go with a lens that offers distortion. So no go when you're doing architectural photography. If you are, if you want to do architectural photography, you want to offer that as an upsell. You're going to have to spend money and get that that funny looking tilt shift, shift lens. But that is that will definitely be an upsell when it comes to real estate photography. Because some people who do architectural want, they need a, a level of detail that usually don't come across in the average real estate photography. Real estate makes it look pretty. Architectural is about accuracy. So keep that in mind, pretty, but accurate. Real estate, you know, you get a good lens and you can make a, a, a 700 square foot house look like a 2200 square foot house. You're going to bring a lot of people there looking to buy it. You know, you get a lot of action because they're like, it's cheap. You sure? That's, that's, it looks really cozy and nice. And you get there and you go in the living room and do a U-turn and knock over the couch and flip the TV because it's, it's smaller than it looks. But the photographer is really good at making that space look bigger. You know, the person that's selling a house will like that attention. Um, whereas in architectural photography, that'll be a complete turnoff. What's your take on high-end center lenses for corporate work? Okay, that's a great question. That's a really good question. I'm not crazy about it for corporate work. Don't get caught up in that. Let me be real with you. Let's let me, I'm gonna tell you what other YouTubers ain't telling you. And I just wanna make sure I punch you in the throat with this, right? Your client don't give a damn. Your client does not care. You care about it. And I've done things with a $98 Helios 58 millimeter that has blown clients away. They did not care what lens I had. Don't let these YouTubers and people online telling you you need to spend $9,000 for one lens to get superb quality for a $2,000 shoot. Do not fall for that. Because the only person that's going to care is you. And I'm not spending $9,000 on a lens to make $2,000. If you do that, you won't be in business long. Don't fall for that. Is there a place for a $9,000 lens? Absolutely. freaking lutely On a movie that's making $228 million. Absolutely. There is a place for cine glass and cinema lenses. There is definitely a place. Now, I'm not talking about the affordable Rokinons and Sam Yangs. Go for it. Yeah. But do not fall for the trap that you need a $3,000 50 millimeter cinema lens to get an image that's usable for, for clients, for business owners. That is complete BS. Don't take on that cost when you don't have to. You gotta be smart with your business. What's up from San Francisco? Any, any advice on SEO from a website? Should I pay to have this done? If so, any recommendations? I have a win, two beta clients, and that's the second one. The second one is paid today, that's dope. Big shout out to you, Fleet Images, for getting a beta client. Um, so if you go to Flash Film Academy and you go up to gear, there is a list 
of companies that I like to use for SEO, depending on who your site is made through. Don't just get somebody that's like, I'm a marketing company. I'm going to offer you SEO. No. Get people who specialize in the platform in which your your website is built on, whether that be Squarespace, WordPress, Wix. I don't care whatever platform your stuff is built on. There's ins and outs to that platform that a great SEO needs to know and understand. So get one that specializes in your platform. Hey, keep in mind that the video you just watched contains clips from a longer lecture that's available to our gold members at flashfromacademy.com. You can go to flashfromacademy.com to watch the complete lectures. If you wanna get all the gems and all the information, or you can stay on the channel and continue watching some of our content here. Just click one of those boxes somewhere around here. Just, yeah, you know where to go. Right up in here, somewhere, wherever it pops up, you, you know what to do. You got this.